Welcome to Hard Questions, where pastors come together and tackle the tough issues of our day right out of our Bible. I'm Don Black. I'm your moderator of this fine panel of pastors. On the panel today are Dr. William R. Glaze from Bethany Baptist Church in Pittsburgh. Pastor Chris Gibbs from Crossway Church in the Mars area. The Pete Giacalone from Rainbow Temple Assembly of God Church in the McKeesport, Pennsylvania. Someone's got to... Where you been? Where you been is all I ask. J. Anthony Gilbert, Kingdom Restoration Christian Center, Mount Washington, PA. As you can tell, we really care about each other. We like each other. <laughs> Most of us like each other. We're all in the ministry. We have pastors here. They've dedicated themselves to the study of the Word. And we make this program available for you to ask questions. Mm -hmm. Because most po folks don't have the opportunity to ask questions of pastors. And so that's what this program is all about. And we don't want the easy questions. Mm -hmm. We want hard questions. So today's program is a special program because it comes from kids. That's right. I said from kids. Mm -hmm. And you know, kids are going to ask some questions. They're going to come at us in different angles. So recently we took the show on the road. Hard <laughs> questions panels went to uh, Chris's church. And while we were there, we took the opportunity to ask some of the kids that are in the church at Crossway Church if they had any questions for the panel, for the pastors. Let's go to the first question. My name is Faith, and my question is, if the Bible says that Adam and Eve were the first to sin, and it also says that um, <laughs> Satan, wait, Lucifer, which is Satan, left Jesus in heaven, which is also a sin, who is the first to sin? Well, no, that's a good question. It's a great so question. So let me restate it, because I have to have a role. Mm -hmm. And my role as a moderator is to kind of restate the question. So Adam and Eve, were they the first to sin, or was it Lucifer who fell because of his, his rebellion in, in, in uh, heaven? Cute looking girl, wasn't she? She's a beautiful girl. <laughs> yeah. Whose daughter is that? I don't yeah, want to <laughs> point out anybody's Everybody's family here. I tell you what, I'd love, I'd love to know her mama. Well, mama. <laughs> who was the first to sin, Pastor? <laughs> well, me, if Chris. somebody doesn't realize that her mama <laughs> is my wife, I just want to make that clear. I'm married to that girl's yeah. mama. Um, but, you know, but but in reality, in actuality, you know, Satan would kind of have that first sin, That's if you right. will. Uh, but it was it was one that only really affected himself and those who chose in that instance to follow. In in, in humanity, in terms of humanity, Adam was the first one cre uh, uh, credited with that sin because his sin would impact generations to come. He was the only one given at that time dominion over the earth, and so when he sinned, uh, that sin would pass through the generations. Well, remember, isn't Satan referred to as the father of sin? That's right. Um, so if he's referred to as the father of sin, and again, uh, the, the, the word for sin is missing a bow and arrow hunter, missing the mark. And of course, Satan missed his mark because his call was to worship God and God only. <clears throat> so the first one to miss that mark would have been, been Satan. And I'm not here to debate, yeah. but I'm saying he missed the mark. And, and of course, not only did he miss the mark as far as sin was concerned, he committed the unpardonable sin in attributing the works of God to himself. Mm. Think about that. Mm. Well, we are okay. here to debate, okay. first of all, okay. and the pastor's going to tell us the, the real deal. What's the real deal? <laughs> well, well I, 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 no, what I, I was... polish your shoes. Because I think Chris kind of answered the question in a nutshell, but, you know, I think as, as we look at that great question that was given, mm -hmm. you know, probably a, a, a more <laughs> specific question coming out of that mm -hmm. is whose sin was worse? And, and, and I, I would uh, uh, propose that Satan's sin was worse. And one reason is because if you look at Adam and Eve, they had a tempter. Mm. Satan had no tempter. That's mm. you know, his, his sin okay. you know, arose from within That's good. You know, because of his pride. That's and and so, you know, that makes his sin worse than, than Adam's sin. That's what his father's sin. Right. right. Father mm -hmm. of lies. Mm -hmm. Well, and with that, I'm going to go a little mm -hmm. step further with that. When Adam sinned, he actually took, if I can say it like this, he took the doctrine of Satan. Mm -hmm. that he originated in heaven good, good, and took good. that doctrine yeah. and passed it on to Adam. And as a result, mm -hmm. when he took of that fruit yeah, 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 yeah. and ate of that lie that originated mm -hmm. in heaven, he now had a fallen nature. And that's why Jesus said in the New Testament, when he would talk to different people, he said, you are of your father, father. That's right. the devil. Right. So he that's is the right. originator of yeah. sin. Yeah. So Satan was the originator of sin. Mm -hmm. Adam and Eve followed in that, in that uh, path, mm -hmm. his doctrine, if you will, of rebellion, mm -hmm. Satan's sin was pride, mm -hmm. and man's sin was being tempted. Right. We don't right. break that down. Well, not, it, it, let me just create that man's sin wasn't being tempted because Jesus was tempted 
and was without sin. But, uh, but Manson was how they responded to the temptation because we're thank all you. tempted. Thank Jesus sure. was tempted. Yeah, so I just want to make sure that we oh, get that one right. They fell into temptation. Yeah. They and they, <clears throat> they, uh, they followed that temptation. Mm -hmm. right. Right. Well, let's go to the second question. Let's see, right. see, we'll see what these kids have to tell. All right. Hi, my name is Grant. And my question is, did Jesus have a best friend? He sure did, did Jesus have a best friend? <laughs> well, who, who is it? John, John the Beloved. Um, and I know people struggle with that, but Jesus had the 12 that he called. Then within that 12, he had an inner circle. Because remember, you know, how close can you be with somebody that here you are at the, at the Last Supper and you reach up and put your head right on Jesus' chest? Come on. John was very, very close. And of all the disciples, they all gave their life yep. except for John. I, I mean, if, and I'm not going to make a doctrine out of it. <laughs> But I think John was... But what's interesting about that, as you say, it was John, I would, but the follow-up question would be, says who? And of course, we know that the Bible says that was the disciple that Jesus loved. But what's interesting <laughs> about that phrase, it's, it's only found in the gospel that was written by, oh, who was it? John. <laughs> so, you know, John is the one who refers to himself as the one Jesus loved. That's a good point. Well, you know, I, I, I guess... Uh, Jesus loves me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when we talk about uh, friends, I think that that's... Uh, earthly identification. Yeah, come on. And, and I, you know, I would like to think that who was he most intimate with? Mm -hmm. And I think that if we look at the scripture to see who he was most intimate with, it was with John. Mm -hmm. Because if you remember when he was dying on the cross, mm -hmm. I mean, he, him, oh, his heart and John's heart was so oh, much my. in right. uh, sync with each other yeah. that he committed his mother and asked John, to, you know, to yeah, take yeah, care yeah. of her. And that's yeah. good. Well, he he took it out of my mouth what I was going to say because, <laughs> you know, if, if I'm going to give someone the responsibility wow. of taking over my mom you wow. know, and to make sure that she's committed into good yeah, hands. Yeah, yeah. That says a lot. So he had a great sure. relationship. Not to mention the fact, uh, what other disciple was there at the cross? Just him. Yeah. Just yeah. John. Right. Yeah. So I mean, I think that goes a long, I think that goes a long way. So, right. But I, I'm going to throw another name on the table as being Jesus' closest, most intimate mm -hmm. friend, if you want to use the word friend. Mm -hmm. And I think that was Mary. I think oh. Mary, his mom, was with him through his whole life, oh. obviously through his whole life, but she was prophetically with him mm. yeah. when the angel visited her before she was even pregnant, yeah. and then she stayed with him all the way through the resurrection. Right. I mean, so the most intimate? Yeah. You say, well, that's her mom. Well, okay. Yeah. That's okay. You can right. be, your best, your best friend can be your mom. Right. And, and you know, it's, I, I don't want to get super spiritual here, but I love that portion of scripture Jesus says, I no longer call you servants. And if you do a word study on that word friend, every one of us are, are John to Jesus. That's what, that's a good point. Well, you know, I, and I, I just want to say, I, 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 to your point, I love that song, uh, Then Came the Morning, mm. you know, where it talks about, you know, the resurrection. Mm. And, and it talks about Mary. Mm. And it says, can you imagine what uh, she must have been thinking as she stood there watching her son die and she thought about wow. when he was born. Oh she my. thought about the angel. Mm. She thought about the wedding where mm. he turned mm. the water into wine. And, uh, and then she's just sitting there, you know, and, and deep in her heart, you know, she knows that this is God, but she's watching him die on the cross. It, 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 brings, it, it brings it into you, the humanity into our living rooms. And you have to. Yeah. You have to. It really does. It shows Jesus and his family. Because his brothers and sisters, you know, had three brothers and mm -hmm. five sisters. And or... don't forget what they said. He has besought himself. Yeah, they, 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 they turned he... away from him. Yeah. Right. They thought mm. that he kind of went, went over the edge. But Mary never did. That's good. Wow. So Mary never That's a really good question about Jesus' yeah. friends. But Pastor yeah. Pete, I think your answer is really what we as Modern day Christians need to understand. We need to know that. We're his best friend. That's, you got it. Right. You, you know, got it. We're his best friend. You're his best friend That's because right. he gave himself for us. That's what else could he do? And, and well, he's given us all opportunities to become more intimate with him. I like in John 14, yeah. he says that he that heareth my commandments and doeth them, mm -hmm. he goes, I will manifest sure myself like to them. I'll open yeah. myself up. Yeah. I'll become more intimate. And a lot of reasons why people don't come into that best friend and can't lay his head, uh, their head on his bosom is because they won't obey. That's right. But if we'll obey, Ooh. he opens up everything Ooh. to right. us. He That's wants wrong. to give us, give us it all. That's right. But wrong. we've got to be willing to give him everything in order Amen. to get that. Well, there's another factor too, brothers, that... Uh, John didn't have that we have. That's right. Because John didn't have the Holy Spirit. That's, That's right. right. You know, That's right. During, during this time, during, right. his, no, during his friendship with yeah. Jesus, yeah. he didn't have the Holy Spirit. But after Pentecost, he did. Oh, baby. But we've got mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit who indwells inside of us. Mm -hmm. So that brings us into a, the most intimate relationship mm -hmm. that we could have yeah. is having that union 
with God in us, the hope that, that hope that loves and stuff. Those are wonderful questions. We got some more. My name is Jay, and I have a question for the pastors today. And I want to know in the Greek and Hebrew if you can give me the answers to this nursery rhyme. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? <laughs> Man, those kids have hard questions, guys. That's right, it's from the word woodchuckus. <laughs> what exactly is a woodchuck? Yeah, woodchuck that's, that's from, the Hebrew, <laughs> from the Hebrew meaning mustakus. <laughs> mustakus. Hey, well, with that, let's take a break. We got okay. some real kids' hard questions coming right up. <laughs> Welcome back to Hard Questions. We're answering questions that come from the kids. Let's go to the very next question. Hi, my name is Brady, and my question is, has Jesus sinned when he was a little kid? Okay, so he's asking, did Jesus sin when he was a little kid? Well, yeah, we have to go to maybe look at what the scripture says about him before he was a kid, after he was a kid. And the fact is, as uh, Paul said, for he hath made him to be sin who, for us who knew no sin. Yeah. So that means whether as an adult or a child that Jesus didn't sin. Yeah. yeah. It says the same thing in 1 Peter 2, 22 as yeah, well. It, does. it yeah. says that he, did, he committed no sin. Yeah. Well, let's and get... he, after, after the, he was missing, when Jesus wound up missing, it says he went home and remained obedient to his parents. So it was a perfect sinless, he had to be perfect sinless. So how did he do that? How was it possible for all the young yeah. men and women watching TV today, how was it possible you for know, Jesus? You know what, it, he relied on his relationship with the Father. Mm -hmm. You know, he was fully God, I mean, he was fully man, but he was still fully God. Yeah. And so I don't know exactly in his age at four and eight what awareness he had, but I think he had an awareness enough to know uh, who the father was sure. because he was still able to speak in respect, uh, honor and obedience. And it's the same thing with each of us. How do we obey? We stay as close as we can to the father. And remember yeah. when he said as a child, I must be obedient to my father's will. That's right. So he knew the whole mission. It bogs our mind, you know, but he knew the whole mission as a child. Um, so it, 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 could I put my mind, uh, going back to Jay, he became little Jay oh, when he asked that question. Wasn't that good looking right. kid? Yeah. 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 So, so let, let, let me become little Bill, right? So to ask, to ask this question, you know, did Jesus ever spill his milk? Did he ever make a mess? And, you know, and, and so I, 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 I'm, I'm going to propose that if he did, that it wouldn't have been a sin. Right. You know, if he right. spilled his oh, milk, you know, that, that well, wouldn't have been good, a sin. Yeah, that's well, a good point. I mean, the thing is, I mean, you know, Little Bill, uh, you can, all, you know, you, you can, you that's can all, be Little Bill. <laughs> that's right, Dr. Little Bill. But the fact is, is, you know, spilling milk, accidents happen. Right. You know, an accident, yeah. that, that's not an act yeah. of will. No, you know what I mean? Right. Did, did, did Jesus have a, I'm sorry, dirty diaper? Of course he did. I mean, there was right. the human functions and things happen all of the time. Yeah. But how he responded to his accidents, if he would have said, you know, some Greek or Hebrew curse word, or something. I mean, that's a, that's an issue. But it's not so much what we do. Sometimes it's how we face what we do and how we respond to what we do. Right. Because I, I, I can see, you know, a, a kid, you know, that has accidents like that, you know, saying, well, is, is that something that, I mean, if he's perfect, how could he do that? Well, you know, he was human yeah. also. That's so, right. yeah. If he goes and knocks the thing over, yeah. we got a whole other thing going right. on. But. And, and I think the thing that we need to emphasize to these little ones, that no matter how bad they can ever be, no. Jesus exactly. always will accept yeah, them. That's, that's, right. that's, that's the, good. Because they want, the kid, I, I hear from this child, he wants to identify. Mm -hmm. and, 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 if, and, and in the real point, if he overstudies this, he'll never be able to accomplish what Jesus yeah. accomplished. Yeah, you know what I mean? That's sinless, perfect life. And you, you, that's a great point. But to go back to what you said, you said, how did he do it? He was also born of a virgin. Oh. And so he had the yeah. DNA of God within him. There yeah, was yeah. no sin yeah, yeah, within yeah. him yeah, because yeah. he didn't come from fallen man. Right. He yeah. came directly from the yes. throne room, yeah. right into the womb of Mary, into yeah. the world as a complete man and 100% God. I told you, that little Jay really, yeah. Yeah. pretty smart. Little Jay's got it. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. So Bell's got it. I'm proud of you, the man you have become. Even to follow up on, on Jay's question, because then some people will say, you know, if he had God in him, you know, when he was tempted, was the temptation real? 
That's you know, right. and, uh, and and yet and still, because he was human, yeah. he felt every temptation. Yeah, that's right. You know, so even, you know, going back to Bradley, was it? Brady. Yeah, Brady. Yeah. Uh, you know, asking the question, you know, that Jesus might not have sinned, but he felt oh. the, the, the temptation he had to. that, that yeah. you know, when, you know, may, maybe if his, if his mother said, don't eat a cookie, right? And, you know, before dinner. And, you know, he looked and, and there might have been that temptation to eat that cookie, but he, he didn't do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because remember the scripture, all points tempted such as yes. us. That's right. Every Amen. imaginable temptation right. any human being could ever have, yes. Jesus went through. So, Brady, stay away from the cookies. Yeah. Stay away from the cookies. <laughs> Don't go near him. And he didn't have a nature that gravitated mm, right. to the yeah. things of the world. I like that. He didn't I, have that yeah, nature within yeah, him. He had the nature DNA. of God, so he might have felt that pull, right. but not like we do. Amen. Because yeah, we right. don't have that same temptation that, or the yeah. same desires that, that he would have had. Mm -hmm. right. Well, let's, let's go on to the next question from the kids. This is great. It is. Hi, my name is Vincent, and my question is, will we know our parents in heaven? Okay, I just want to say, Don, that <laughs> that, that is one good-looking kid. He looks like his mother. It doesn't, that, yeah, nobody has ever said that. Uh, although now he says, Daddy, does that mean I'm going to look like you? I said, why? He goes, because, Dad, you're bald. Oh, thanks, bud. Um, I, I like that, you know, I like his question. If I can jump in there, you know, will we know our parents in heaven? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I would say to, you know, to my son and to any other that would ask that question, you better believe it. Yeah. You know, I believe you are going to recognize if, if Jesus was recognized... By he, in his glorified body, yeah. mm -hmm. then we too, I believe, will be recognized in our own glorified bodies. Well, then in Luke uh, 16, you know, where you have the rich man and Lazarus, Lazarus. Sure. you know, and they were in eternity, yeah. you know, and they both were recognizable in eternity. So, you know, yeah, we're going to know our father, mother, and, you know, maybe here on earth, some people that we don't want to know that make it in, we're going to know them too. Yeah. Surprise, yeah. it made it. That's yeah. right. That's right. <laughs> some people you think you may see there may not be, may not may not be, be there. there. Let's make sure we're there through Amen. the blood of Jesus. Amen. Whoa, whoa. Amen. Well, you know, in 2 Samuel chapter 12 as well, uh, David said that he would go to his son. Yeah. Mm. So he said, yes. now I won't, he won't come back to me, right. but I will go to him. 2 Samuel 12, 23, it says. That's yeah. real good. He's two for two. This guy's yeah. knocking him out of the park. Little nah. Jay's on. Little Jay. Little Jay's on. <laughs> That's how I'm going to start introducing myself. <laughs> I'm the little Jay. Little Jay. Jay. <laughs> From Mount Washington. <laughs> but, you know, there's another verse, and, you know, and this one might be a little questionable. Some people are question it, but, you know, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13 that we will know as we are known. That's right. yeah. So, uh, you know, I, 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 I wouldn't take that to mean that, you know, people will know who we are and yeah. we will know who they are. And we'll know the answers to all these questions That's that, right. we don't know, hey. that we don't have the yeah. capacity to know now. Because we'll be like him. We'll have the knowledge mm -hmm. available to us. I don't yeah. think we'll ever have that capacity that God has. We're not going to become no. little gods, mm -hmm. but we are sons of, and daughters of God. Let's, let's see what the next question is. My name is Joshua, and my question is, why didn't Jesus say whenever he was coming back, whenever he left? No, that's a really that's good, a good question. question. Why didn't he say when he was coming back, when he left? Well, because he wanted to make sure his room was clean when he came back. <laughs> <laughs> just tease him, just tease him. Well, you know, I, I would say, you know, when we look at Philippians chapter 2, it says that... Uh, it, the uses the word kenosis, which means he emptied himself. Mm. And so there were certain things when Jesus came to earth that him and the father agreed with that he chose not to know. I mean, because he's God, he knows everything. Yeah. He's got to know it. He's got to know it or he's not God. But so there's times that he chose to submit his knowledge to the father. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, as far as when the scripture says, no man knows the day or the hour, not even the son of man. Mm -hmm. Well, he knows. He knew. But he just chose at that moment in his humanity yeah. not to know it. I think that's well put. That's a good point. Yeah. So at that moment, because of Christ's position mm -hmm. on earth, he emptied himself of, of all the foreknowledge. Right. And when he said that, that no man knows, that was he was speaking the truth. Yeah. Now, kind of little deep waters there, but he's speaking the truth. So the answer is he didn't know he was coming back. But he did tell us some hints. He gave us some hints, right. some signs mm -hmm. that to look for, mm -hmm. for his second coming. And, and you know, I wasn't teasing when I told, when I said about having your room clean, because Jesus says that the hour you think not, yeah. that's when I, the Son of Man will return. So it's when we think he's not coming, that's, he said, that's when he will come. And it's not that he's purposely coming to take us by surprise. The intent of that is 
be watching every moment. Yeah, because of. it's all about trust. And then, I mean, our whole relationship with God and through Christ is about trust. And if we know everything, then why would I trust you if I already know what you know? If I know everything, I don't need to trust you. And I think what it comes, what did he say? You know, this is the Pastor Chris sermon of the day with the three points. Good, good, good. The little, little Bill's got the poem. But, you know, <laughs> watch, wait, and work, right? Watch. You know, keep watch. And then also, you know, work. You've got a job to do, so do it. And then wait. Wait on him, continue to trust him, knowing that God's going to do everything. If Jesus said he's coming back, you can take that check to the bank. It ain't going to bounce. That's so good. we That's should good. know, be ready all the time because we don't know the time and he can come back anytime. Whoa! Uh, hey. the there goes your phone. Whoa. Yeah, there, there you go. There's a grand slam. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, little Jay. I'm gone. We just might as well say goodnight. Abri, abri, abri. That's all. Stick a fork in that. That was done. This is the end of that subject. Well, we're, we know that he is returning. Amen. Amen. And when we went to Noah's uh, Ark, and Pastor, we went to Noah's Ark, and Pastor, we went to Noah's Ark together, uh, one thing that kept coming back into my mind is the scripture that says, as in the days of Noah, oh. so shall those end times be. Mm. And I thought about what the culture was like in yeah. the Noah, right. and how parallel our culture is yeah. today. Yeah. And that made me, when I looked at this rescue vessel that God created yeah. mm. to take his people out of it. Right. Think about how God's going to take wow. us, his people, out of this days, mm. as in the days of Noah, and rescue us mm. with the rapture of his church. That's what Jesus coming back means. When you say that to me, I'm thinking about the, the rapture of the church. I'm with you, sir. Now, I know he's coming back and set up his kingdom, too. Right. So that's really another issue. But when you talk about Jesus is coming, I'm thinking when he takes us up and meets, meets us in the clouds Amen. and we're, we're, we're raptured. That's a good answer. Good questions. Don't you, I love these kids' questions. Yeah, they were great. Yeah, they're good. Good. Some good kids from Some of them are looking for some, of, some yeah. are real sharp. I, I just have one problem. It seemed like a little nepotism. I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes hey. it ain't what you know, it's who you know, brother. Hey, isn't heaven all about nepotism? We are all sons and daughters. <laughs> well, don't go away. We're going to come back in just a few seconds, real, literally a few seconds, and we're going to close the program with just our last thoughts. Don't go away. Pastors, this has been a fun program, but a lot of rich meat in this mm. program, too, that comes from our children. We always end our programs with a scripture. So let's do that today. It's out of Mark. Let the little children mm. come to me and go, do not forbid them, for such is the kingdom of God. Pastor Glaze, such is the kingdom of God. Amen. You know, that's, unless we are willing to become a child mm. in, in our faith and trust Jesus, you know, we can't enter into the kingdom of God. You know, I think it just really teaches us to, to, to learn that humility and also just to see the compassion of God. You know, I love my children. There's nothing they could do to make me stop loving them. And, you know, what can separate us from the love of God? Nothing. Amen. I also think that <clears throat> that childlike faith, you tell a child something, man, they're, they're going to receive it all and they're going to believe it all. Mm -hmm. Our Father has told us everything he has for us. May we be like that child that we're, we're just going to receive it all, believe it all, and expect it all. That's a good word. And I'm going to end it on a lighter note. Uh -oh. uh, my little kids, James back. Little, little James back. <laughs> my kids caused me to have to seek the kingdom of God because they're, ki they're kids. You know what I mean? So it's one of the things where having children just makes you want to pray more. So. <laughs> <laughs> and well, sleep more. <laughs> when, I, when, I, when I think of children and I get around little children, I think of innocence. Amen. Think about how Amen. innocent they oh are because they don't have any reason not to believe you. They don't have any reason to suspect you yeah. or to fear you because they don't know. We're so glad you watched uh, the Hard Questions program. Send your hard question into us at hardquestions at ctvn.org. <laughs> Or you can call our prayer line, which is 888-665-4483, uh, and just tell our prayer partner. You got a hard question for them, pastors. We receive that with great joy. Thank you for watching the program. Thank you for standing up for the truth. Thank you for caring about what the truth is. And we'll see you on the next Hard Questions.